Welcome back to an occasional video series, which I'm going to call <laughs> Learn VS Code With Me. I don't mean I'm teaching you VS Code. I literally mean that as I find cool things in VS Code, I'm just going to record little videos so that I can remember how to do it. And hopefully I can help someone else find out how to do these things that I found so tricky initially, even though they might have been blatantly obvious. Um, so today we're going to look at using the 5250 screen emulator, the good old fashioned green screen. You may be familiar with this. You will be familiar with this if you use IBM i, i series or AS400, the old versions of the machine. Here's our classic screen emulator, sometimes called a 5250 terminal, often called green screen. It doesn't have to be green. Obviously it's called green screen because the Green text on a black background is the default. This is an emulator called TN5250J. It's a free download. Just go and Google it, or the download link is on my website, nicklitton.com. I have nothing to do with it. It's just out there in internet land. It's a Java-based screen emulator and just works. Very basic, very quick, very cool. Or you can use IBM ACS, the Access Client Solution. This is IBM's super powerful IBM I tool. Uh, which includes the screen emulator. Their emulator looks like this. Don't be fooled by the fact that it has a different color. Its default is exactly the same, green on black. However, I've changed the screen settings to my preferred layout. I like to see black text on a white background. I've also got a little copyright thing on the back with my name. You can tinker with all of these things yourself. Now, of course, this video is about VS Code. So let's launch VS Code. When I'm coding in VS Code, I would like to be able to have a sign-on session in here. So I haven't got to keep losing it or, or leaving it to flick out to another session on my machine. And it has a very cool facility built into VS Code. Click on IBM I over on your toolbar. Obviously, you have to have the Code for I extension installed to your machine. You can see that you, once you're connected to your box, you'll see your library list, any objects in libraries that you're browsing, any IFS entries that you're playing with. Mine happens to have reopened a couple of bits of code that I was editing last time I was in VS Code. So the connection to my IBM I system is active. When I was trying to figure out how to get the 5250 session working, it talks about running terminal. But the examples that I found on uh, Rumble and YouTube were all referring to click on terminal on the menu and press a button up here. But they were Mac examples. And I guess this is slightly different between Mac and Windows because there was nothing up here that I could figure out how to get the darn 5250 session running. If I just click terminal, then you have a terminal entry over here. You might be going, why is that over here? Just my layout, right? If I click on the heading bar, say panel position bottom, by default, I think, if you're in VS Code, you'll be seeing all of these ports, IBMI, all of your stuff down at the bottom. I just prefer to have it over on the right panel position, right? Because it gives me a longer screen editing format to look at. Don't let that confuse you. All we want to think is, how do we open the 5250 emulator? And it's very simple. We have this connection open to our IBM I system. If we look down on our toolbar at the bottom, I'm running Windows 11, you'll see my connection. There's my system name. If you just hover over it, I haven't touched anything on the mouse, a little menu appears. And one of them is terminals. Terminals then says, what terminal do you want to open? So this is launching a terminal connection to our IBM I system either in PACE, PACE is like the AIX Unix-E sort of environment where we can run commands natively on the machine, or 5250. If I click 5250, here we saw some commands flashing up in our terminal over on the right. And look, we have a little sign on screen. And I can sign in here, and I can have a quick and dirty, very basic sign on screen running here in VS Code. Now, there's a few little neat things that we can do with that. But before we do those neat things, how on earth is this running? Or why isn't it running for you if you are running it? So let's close it and look at some of the basics of how this works. OK, what we're doing is we're connecting to an install, an open source install of TN5250 that runs on your power system. It's installed in the QOpenSys location in IFS. And you can install it a couple of ways. You can install it using yum, you know, manually running the commands to suck it down off the web and install it on your machine. Or very simply, you can install it using IBM I ACS that will do it for you. So let's open ACS. If you look at the ACS menu screen, right down the bottom, you see open source package management. You click on open source package management. It asks you for your connection. Once you're connected, 
it shows you the installed open source packages that are on your machine. These should more or less be the same as the ones you already have on your machine. Um, I have probably got some extra things because I've been playing with some different bits and pieces on my box like Python and Node.js. And if you look down the bottom of my installed packages, I have TN5250 installed. If you don't have TN5250 installed there, simply click on Available Packages. Go through this. This is everything that's available for your machine that you haven't installed yet. Look, there's loads of goodies for you to play with. And somewhere down the bottom, you'll see TN5250. Click on it, click install, and it will suck it in. You're good to go. So let's close that out. And here is our, we're back to our sign-on session. There's a couple of nice things that you can do within the sign-on session. When you're running it, if you click on this little icon at the top, that says IBM I5250, you can change various details about where this terminal lives. Let's, if we say move terminal into a new window, it will pop it up in a completely separate window that you can move around. So you could flick here, it's treating it kind of like an external session. It pops another session open so you can switch into code, switch back out to that session. I don't really see any benefit to doing that because I could just as easily be running a 5250, TN5250J or ACS and be flicking in and out, right? So that's not really my favorite way of doing it, even though it's perfectly valid. Okay, so I've just closed my 5250 session. If you go down to hover over your system name where we click terminals to start the session, go to settings. This gives us all kinds of settings for this connection to our IBM I system. You'll notice that up here you have terminals. You click on terminals, the default is a standard encoder, the code page for your terminal session. I suggest you leave that the same unless you particularly want to change to a different one. And the terminal type for the 5250 emulator, where we can choose 24 by 80 screens, 27 by 132. I almost always choose this one, the IBM 3477 FC, which is a wide screen, green screen format, but it allows color. Um, you could set your device name, you know, QPA Dev 1234 or Dispo 1 or whatever. I just leave that to auto connect. This is the only thing I ever change is the terminal type. Set it to 3477FC and you're then a 132 character session. So let's just launch a session now. Terminals 5250 and here it is running. What I then tend to do is I click on terminal and I say move to editor area. Unlike the new window, editor area is very neat. It puts it into a tab amongst my code. So I can move it around. I always drag it to the first one. That Whenever I'm writing code in multiple tabs, I can always click on the leftmost tab and be on my system. And then I'm logged in. Now, if I have something particular that I want to look at in widescreen, if I look at some code, for example, and you can see here that I'm looking at code. And because I'm doing a, one to, uh, a widescreen format, I'm seeing a much wider screen area. By default, I would only see the first, well, the first, every screen is 80 characters wide, right? Obviously taking into account things here. Always do a set expert. It uh, gets rid of these function keys down the bottom and gives you a bigger screen to look at your code in. That's it. Embedding a little 5250 emulator in VS Code is simple, works very nicely as long as you have TN5250 installed as one of your open source packages. Very impressed, very cool. And once I figured out how to do it, I like it a lot. There's probably much better ways of doing it. If there are, please leave in the comments, educate me so that I can learn with you while you learn with me. That should be a tagline. Um, that's it, I'm gonna record the next thing. I'm playing with code today, doing a few um, program development options. I'm migrating all of my source code for some of my tool sets out of source files into the IFS and then using VS Code to compile everything. I'm gonna be using Bob, the new open source, Bob the Builder, um, which I really like. It's a way of compiling and building source from the IFS. And I'm gonna see how that works with copybooks and all that stuff. So no doubt I'll be recording a video about that later today, once I figure out how to make the darn thing work. So uh, yeah, enjoy yourself out there in VS Code land, and I'll see you on the flip side. Okay, thanks all, bye.